What happens when we go medieval with the world's largest catapult? Get there, baby. Okay, so here we are. Our mission? Use this contraption to hurl a huge projectile and blow up this unsuspecting hut. When you get up close to this or you walk up the ladder, it really reminds you how much damage these things can do. What brought us to the brink of this insanity? You had to ask. This is Ron Toms. He's the founder of RLT Industries, an educational toy and hobby company which makes trebuchets of all sizes. All of these various models have one thing in common. They all use a counterweight to get things going. Basically, the counterweight is how it stores energy. We're talking thousands of pounds here. Thousands of pounds, 12, maybe 15,000 pounds. Wow. And what trebuchets were used mostly for was lobbing things over the castle wall as opposed to trying to puncture the castle wall. Because if you put enough nasty stuff inside the castle wall, like a lot of diseased and rotting corpses, flaming pots of tar, flaming the people inside, right. they'd rather be outside the castle than in. In fact, it was kind of a psychological warfare. Then Ron says the words we long to hear. Let's shoot this and see what happens. Absolutely. Oh, hey. Nice. Oops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Watch what happens when the trebuchet is launched. You can see just the motion of this from what we call centrifugal force. This thing always wants to kind of go out in a straight line. You're pulling it in, so this thing is constantly under tension. And as soon as it gets released, you can see that tension get released immediately, and it just kind of starts bending. And that bend ca carries itself back in. The tension releases through that string. That's a great analysis. That's exactly right. That is a great analysis, but Matt sums things up best. I want to throw <laughs> Lots and lots of <laughs> Anything we can get our hands on around here. I'm bored with the science already. Ask and you shall receive, Bam. Matt. Bam. In order to start having fun, we need a more stable base. Once that's in place, Time Warp is ready to go medieval on our own studio. First, a golf ball. Three, two, one. Nice. That's that much looked more like fun. a dent. Let's switch to an egg. This is clearly a recipe for disaster. Next victim, an employee volunteer. Keyword, volunteer. Appropriately garbed and safety glassed. Meet Pam. Okay, let's just line this up with Pam. There it is. Three, two. Oh! oh what? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> that was fun, man. No, that now was we're great. talking my language here. Yikes. We're breaking eggs. Three, and getting good at it. but this is nowhere near cool enough. I think we should get everything in this place, just get everyone searching for anything that's gonna make a mess on this wall. Let's get it in here. Again, ask and you shall receive. In medieval times, they called this pillaging. Okay, we can't throw a TV with these things, but we can do some damage. <laughs> we did it! Notice the eggs, followed by chunks of dry ice. That's not a hot dog, it's a paintball. Those are bottles. That was Pam's candy bowl. Watch again at 1,000 frames per second. The miniature trebuchets propel the objects at speeds up to 25 miles per hour. 
That's Storm in the Castle right there. That's Storm in the Castle. Storm in the elaborately fake castle with <laughs> pink paint. Impressive stuff, guys. But remember that cold field we told you about earlier? Time to meet Godzilla Trebuchet. In this corner, our target, a wooden hut. In the other corner, the Yankee Siege, a trebuchet that weighs in at 26 tons. Height, 55 feet. Capable of throwing a 100-pound projectile upwards of 400 yards. Ready to destroy anything in its path. Yep, this is definitely our kind of fight. The Yankee Siege is managed by dentist turned trebuchet engineer, Steve Seegers. Plunges in. While Steve fine tunes his insanely expensive giant toy, we get to work situating our high speed cameras. We we're tilt up like, oh, we're getting close. And loading the trebuchet with a metal cube that we light on fire. The goal being lobbing self-same fiery cube 600 feet at this unsuspecting hut. That is where the fire trucks will come in. Watch it, this is gonna go up high. But first, it's just a matter of testing the device. That did not go nearly as far as we wanted. And making adjustments. I put the flames up. The good news is we don't have to go very far to bring it back no, and do it again. The counterweight trebuchet, which uses leverage to propel its payload, is more accurate and powerful than earlier types of catapults, which used elastic potential energy. Distance is achieved in our next launch. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. However, this one's just a bit outside. That is just so awesome. So we go again. That's when we noticed something. We broke our trebuchet. <laughs> Unfortunately, this arm was designed to throw 100-pound projectiles, and we've been throwing 200-pound projectiles all day. Each time we threw it, it would tweak the arm just a little bit. Yeah, these things are designed for stress in a really specific direction. You go like 10% off, and they're one-tenth as strong. So that exactly. last one bent that thing way out of whack. You know, we can't even use that again. Wow, we really did bend that. I feel bad. Hey, guys, turn those frowns upside down. Through the miracle of modern film editing and artful recreation, Time Warp presents what would have happened if our giant trebuchet had actually worked. Dead down the line, right there. Uh, but of course that didn't happen. 